Hey everyone, this is MidTube again, and I welcome you to this fast and concise tutorial on how to identify extrasystoles on an ECG. Now I'm not discussing the etiology, the pathophysiology, or the management of each condition, but merely focusing on how to identify each abnormality on an ECG. So here we go, ECG's abnormal rhythms, extrasystoles. Extrasystoles are also called pre-ectopic beats and also called premature contractions and all of them are defined as any part of the heart depolarizing earlier than it should be. It means that part of the heart does not wait for the action potential coming from the SA node but simply depolarizing spontaneously by itself. But this, but this is just an occasional event. That's why extrasystoles are classified as occasional arrhythmias and not sustained arrhythmias. In other words, the heart will return to normal sinus rhythm after that premature contraction. They are classified into three main categories. The first is called atrial extrasystoles or premature contractions, means originating from the atria, nodal or jun junctional extrasystoles originating from the AV node, and ventricular extrasystoles originating from the ventricles. Atrial extrasystoles are characterized by the following on an ECG. Abnormal P wave and it's abnormal because the P wave represents atrial depolarization. So if the atria are abnormal and they're giving abnormal beats, the P wave will be abnormal of course. The QRS is normal because the ventricles are normal and it's followed by a pause. So abnormal P wave followed by a pause. See here this rhythm, this, this ECG strip, the first thing you look at is the rhythm rhythm here is irregular. You see here abnormal P wave followed by a pause. Abnormal P wave followed by a pause. QRS is normal. This is called atrial premature contraction. We can classify atrial premature contractions into unifocal and or multifocal. Unifocal means all the premature atrial contractions look identical because they originate from a single atrial ectopic focus. Multifocal means they are the the, diff, the uh, premature atrial contractions look different because they originate from different foci. We could also classify them based on their beginning patterns. The patterns. So, with the first type is called atrial bigeminy. Every other beat is a premature atrial contraction. So, normal beat. We have we have here this normal ECG complex, normal beat, followed by abnormal beat, peaked P wave, followed by a pause. Normal beat, abnormal beat, normal beat, abnormal beat. The abnormal beat is the extrasystole, of course. This is called atrial bigeminy. Atrial trigeminy is every third beat is a premature atrial contraction. So normal beat, normal beat, extrasystole. Normal beat, normal beat, extrasystole. Every third beat is an extrasystole. Atrial couplets means two consecutive premature atrial contractions. So, normal beat, two extrasystoles. Normal beat, two extrasystoles. Normal beat, two extrasystoles. This is atrial couplets. Atrial triplets means three consecutive premature atrial contractions. So, normal beat, three extrasystoles. Normal beat, three extrasystoles. This is atrial triplets. I apologize for not putting an ACG example here because I couldn't find um, a good example on the internet. The second type is called nodal or junctional extrasystole, and it's, ab it's exactly the same as atrial extrasystole, the only difference is that the P wave is absent. It could be immediately before or immediately after the QRS complex, but it's usually absent. QRS is normal and it's followed by a pause. We have this example here. Look at the rhythm. The rhythm is irregular here, just at one focus, right here. So this is an extrasystole. And the P wave is absent. Uh, QRS is normal, less than three small squares, followed by a pause. This is nodal or junctional extrasystole, originating from the AV node. The third and last category is called ventricular extrasystole, and it's characterized by absent P wave, a wide QRS complex because originating from the ventricles, so more than three small squares. It has an inverted T wave and it's followed by a pause. We have this example here. We have a normal beat right here, but here we have this abnormal thing right here. This is ventricular extrasystole. 
uh, you can see this wave here this is a T wave of the preceding wave this is not a P wave so we have absent P wave a wide QRS complex inverted T wave and a pause it's followed by a pause the interval between this uh, QRS complex and the next uh, one is longer than the normal RR interval so it's followed by a pause so absent P wave wide QRS inverted T wave followed by a pause we are we could also classify them based on morphology into unifocal pre premature ventricular contractions and multifocal and it's exactly the same definition as the Israel one but this is the different this is a ventricle one from the ventricles multifocal different morphologies you can see this QRS comp this uh, this beat here looks different from this premature this extrasystole looks different from this extrasystole so different morphologies of the ventricular extrasystoles we could also classify them based on their repetitive pattern in true the following the first is called ventricle by Gemini same definition every other beat is a premature ventricular contraction so one normal beat one ventricular extrasystole one normal beat one ventricular extrasystole one normal beat one ventricular extrasystole again the ventricular extrasystole no P wave a wide QRS complex inverted T wave and it's followed by a pause this wave here is the T wave over a preceding wave of a preceding beat sorry the second is the second type is called ventricular trigeminy every third beat is a premature ventricular contraction so normal wave normal beat normal beat ventricular extrasystole normal beat normal beat ventricular extrasystole every third beat is a ventricular extrasystole a ventricular quadrigeminy means every fourth beat is a premature ventricular contraction so normal beat normal beat normal beat ventricular extrasystole normal beat normal beat normal beat ventricular extrasystole you can also see here that this uh, ECG strip is multifocal see this ventricular extrasystole looks different in morphology from this one so this one we can call it as multifocal ventricular quadrigeminy the fourth type based on the repetitive pattern is called ventricular couplets and we've got two consecutive premature ventricular contractions so this normal beat here followed by two ventricular extrasystoles and then a pause normal beat two ventricular extrasystoles pause this is ventricular couplets the, last, the fifth and the last type is called ventricular triplets uh, where we have three consecutive premature ventricular contractions so one normal beat three ventricular extrasystoles one normal beat three ventricular extrasystoles and if we have more than three consecutive premature ventricular contractions then then we'll be calling it as ventricular tachycardia uh, we I've just got a few points to to point at regarding ventricular extrasystoles and it's that ventricular extrasystoles are clinically significant when we have an R on T phenomenon so when we have the R wave of the ventricular extrasystole occurring at the T wave of the preceding wave so we have here this T wave the beginning of the T wave of this normal wave T wave and then R wave of the ventricular extrasystole this is significant because this could develop could progress into ventricular fibrillation which is life-threatening so when we have an R on T phenomenon this is clinically significant and you should look for this if you have more than three consecutive premature ventricular contractions then it's called ventricular tachycardia and it's also life-threatening so if you have too many premature ventricular contractions you should be aware premature ventricular contractions occurring in the setting of an MI is also clinically significant so be sure to look for these three points that's all for pre for uh, extra systoles or premature contractions. I hope you could benefit from this and for our next video on bradycardias.